Apparently, one PC that readily comes to mind when thinking of building a budget gaming PC is a Dell Optiplex. Use Dell Optiplex 390, something like this Dell Optiplex. There are countless YouTube videos showing you how you can turn a proprietary Dell Optiplex PC into a super gaming PC capable of playing a host of game titles. And it's not surprising that these videos get tons of views on the platforms. Bro, the times are hard. Who wouldn't want to have a rock solid gaming PC for $150? <laughs> well, I sure do and this is the exact reason I set out to build my own budget gaming PC except that I had no clue that the whole project was about to go wrong. I was super excited given that all I had to do was to get a good enough graphic card and slap it over a cheap but reliable dead Optiplex PC and then make sure that an SSD and a minimum of 16GB RAM is installed. It's pretty interesting because back in the days, building a gaming PC would have meant I had to first figure out the main board, I had to buy a good enough CPU, a cooler, fans, hard drives and the list goes on and on and on. And as if that was not enough, one also needed to spend countless hours simply to ensure that all the various components were properly set up. And believe me, this investment in terms of time and money was not cheap. First things first, I hopped on eBay, one website that is famous for used, cheap and in many cases functional PCs. And after about 20 minutes of deep search, I was already smiling out of the platform as I had gotten myself a very good Dell Optiplex 5050 PC. The PC looked very modern and rock solid. It was rocking an Intel Core i5-6500 3.2GHz CPU, 4GB DDR4 RAM, 320GB HDD as well as a DVD drive. All this for $49 including shipping. Boy, this was going to be mega. Unfortunately, the seller had just one picture of the PC on eBay, so really didn't know what to expect in terms of port and connection possibilities, but believe me, I had zero interest on whatever was going on behind the PC. My satisfaction was that a functional PC would be sent to me and in a matter of days, I should be a proud owner of a gaming PC. With the PC bought, I went onto Amazon to look for some good deals. Fortunately, I was able to lay my hand on a 256GB SSD, a 1TB HDD, a 16GB DDR4 RAM as well as a Radeon ROX 570 graphics card. Although this was not the latest card in the gaming street but I was sure that with this card I would be able to get at least a decent FPS on a number of game titles. Few days later my tools were beginning to show up at my address. It wasn't surprising that the Amazon orders showed up first thanks to my having subscribed to Amazon Prime. By the way a link to the Amazon Prime subscription is included in the description below. Wow the ROX 570 out of the box was looking sweet. 4GB DDR5. HDMI, DVI, DisplayPort, dual fan, card had little or no signs of use. Kind of appears to me that it was an Amazon return. The busty had all the warranty papers, plastic seeds. Bro, just give me the card. Every other thing can go. I got this card for $85. 16 GB DDR4 RAM, 2400 MHz quality product. This came in for about $39. A quality Seagate Barracuda 1 TB HDD. I decided to go for new this time because a few weeks back I had got a used HDD drive online. It worked for a few days and then from nowhere the drive suddenly crashed on me. 256GB Intenso SSD. If you've been following this channel for an X amount of time, you would have seen that this is one of my SSD of choice. And I got this for approximately $16. So if my calculation is right, my whole investment so far on this Dell budget build stands at $243. <laughs> Not bad for a gaming PC with a 6th gen Intel Core i5, a 16GB DDR4 RAM, an AMD Radeon 4GB DDR5 graphics card, a 256GB SSD and a 1TB HDD. Oh, I guess the PC is here and if yes, then that would be one super fast delivery I would have received from an eBay seller in recent times. Bro, I'm not disappointed at all. This PC looks super clean. I can tell it was for the most part used in an office environment. It's amazing how lucky one can get at times on eBay. Interestingly, the PC already had a graphic card, specifically a Radeon RO5 430. I'll possibly sell this once I'm done with this build. In this way, I could further reduce my expense on this PC. I would definitely keep this 320 GB Toshiba HDD drive and install it on one of my many low-grade PCs. And for the RAM, this 4 GB should definitely still sell for there about $12. So between between the graphics card and the RAM, if sold correctly, I should recover there about $45, making the cost of this build to be exactly $198.
Installing the SSD theoretically should not take time, except that for one funny reason, it took quite an effort for me to unplug the SATA cable. The bad boy was more or less stuck onto the old drive that I had to literally fight with the cable to get it out. The HD drive bay was also kind of strange. I'm pretty much used to the older Dell Optiplex machines like the 7010, 7020, 3020 and the likes. For these models, getting out the HD caddy was always a one-way process, but on this machine, I needed to gently take out the front panel to enable me get hold of this thing. It was kind of a long process I would say, but in any case, I did get it fixed. Having done that, I got hold of the RAM sticks and quickly plugged it onto the main board one after the other. Interestingly, this PC has 4 RAM slots, so in the event that I would like to upgrade to 64GB of RAM, this shouldn't normally be a problem. At this point, it was time to slap in my Radeon ROX 570 graphics card. Ordinarily, all I needed to do was to take out the old card and then slot in the new card. But on this PC, that wasn't going to happen just like that without any drama. Firstly, it was just not possible to easily take out the brackets behind, just like in most pieces. I needed to break it out, and luckily I didn't hurt myself in the process. Then I plugged the new card onto the PCIe slot, but then came the moment of truth. Damn, the card wasn't going to fit onto the PC. It was too big for this mini tower casing, and there was no way I was going to close the PC. At this point, to say I was disappointed was to say the least. It wasn't funny, bro. My hopes for gaming on this PC tonight had suddenly been broken. At this point, one thing was sure. I was going to immediately send back this PC to get a refund for my money. So I quickly took out all my hardwares, put the old graphics card back in, took out my SSD and returned the 2.5-inch HDD. Took out my 1TB HDD as well as the 16GB RAM and replaced the RAM with the 4GB the PC originally came with. Then I hated the fact that I had lost so much time and effort in trying to get this work. Hmm. But then, one thing was still missing at this point, which was the back bracket, which unfortunately I had broken in my excitement. I anyhow figured out a way to include it with the PC. At this point, it was time to ship back the PC. So what are the major take back from this whole build? Firstly, if you decide on a budget build using a Dell Optiplex PC, you'll be much better off looking in the direction of the older Dell Optiplex machines, say a Dell Optiplex 7020 or even a 7010. Because on these models, you have more upgrade possibilities in terms of space for a wider range of graphics cards, as well as having the possibility to upgrade the power supply unit, aka PSU. The Dell Optiplex 5050 uses proprietary connectors and in most cases, it's almost impossible to change this around without running into problems. Secondly, although the 6th gen Intel Core i5 CPU looks cheap and recent, the quad core Intel i5 and i7 CPUs on the older Dell Optiplex machines can still in most cases outshine the newer Intel 6th and 7th generation CPUs. An example being the 3770 Intel Core i7 CPU. Lastly, before undertaking any budget PC build, always make sure to consider the size of the card you intend to use and ensure you have the matching PC case. Do ensure to click on the next video here to find out how I finally built my first budget gaming PC with all these hardware except that this time I had to use a HP compact PC. Until I see you again, peace.